And you're one of the, seems to be one of those rare Christians mm. who maintained a career in Hollywood without mm. losing your soul. So first up, however, did you do that? Cause that is, it's not completely unknown, but it ain't easy. No, it's not easy. Um, I think people will often say, oh, you have an immense trust in God. And I said, yes, absolutely. And But more than that, um, obedience to him is my life. And so I get to be his daughter, yes, but I also get to choose to serve him yep. with the entirety of my being. So it just, I never had a choice. Like I was a high school teacher and a missionary. Like that was my, that was my chosen path. Um, and he just kind of completely pivoted it and said, no, I want you to, I want you in Hollywood and I want you to, to, to be there, um, in obedience to me. And so I've just never had a choice, Kate. And so I sit there and I, I often say not as a, as a, a critique of Hollywood or critique of anyone in particular, but I often say, Hey, I didn't, I intentionally chose not to play the Hollywood normal cadence of, of a career path by God's choice. And mm -hmm. I also chose to not, um, in, in this industry to thrive, you do have to network or, or politically maneuver or, you know, and some people choose to do that in a healthy way and others in a toxic way. Mm. And I chose to just do neither because it's just not who God made me to be. And so I know I delayed my career by like seven to 10 years. <laughs> yeah. And so then Mark and Roma had eyes to see me and really elevated me, um, to their great credit. Um, and then the chosen came along and this is the first time I feel able to fully be expressed in how God made me in this weird, I have all this mainstream experience, but also I know the faith space incredibly well. So I get to be a bridge, Kate, and that's pretty extraordinary. Well, I covered mainstream entertainment for decades. And now I'm like the, I literally will be at the TV Critics Association press tour next week and I'll be the hand in the room going, yeah, or hey, what, you know, about anything touching faith and they'll all turn around and look at me, but I'm used to that. Um, a lot of Christians that I've met and a lot of people that I read online, they're they're very negative about the entertainment industry. They mm -hmm. don't want to touch it. They will complain all day about what it turns out, but they don't want to be in it. They don't want their kids in it. They don't want to touch it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you can't win if you don't play. Yeah. You know, so what is your pitch to get people of faith to buck up and give it a try, get, bring their best talents and bring their efforts to media in general, but especially the entertainment? I'm such a champion of not only did Jesus welcome anyone at his table, but he also told his followers to do the same. And I'm passionate about sprinting towards people that have differing opinions, that have a different worldview, that have a different faith-based model and system that as Christians, I, I, I find that we can be quite intolerant at times of, of, of just people being in process mm -hmm. and everything about the series and everything about how I engage with Hollywood, which, you know, isn't a forthright Christian place, of course, but it's this permission to be in process and I can meet anyone on their journey. We are all allowed our own journeys in Christ and we're all allowed our own, our own faith walks in general. And so I encourage Christians of just, I think we go, Oh, Hollywood's so dark. And I was like, no, it's alive with beautiful light and creativity. We can learn a lot from Hollywood as Christians of this ability to think outside the box and be strategic and innovative. Like that's our God, Kate. Mm -hmm. And I think we actually in turn have a lot to learn um, of where I think Hollywood in many ways are doing things better than even we are. So I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for the collaboration and I'm here for owning who God has made me to be and who he is in a space that might not always be welcoming of him. I'm not afraid of that. That's okay. I did an interview with Daryl Eves a while ago and wrote up a story and just coming at it from a long TV perspective. I mean, I'm not really a movie buff a movie expert, but TV, I know. Mm. And I think, I mean, I, I could be wrong, perhaps in the golden age of TV, it's such a long history here and there, who knows. But I think this is the first time when it hit the CW, I thought, this is the first time in my knowledge that an independently produced television show of any kind, let alone a Jesus show, 
produced especially by a non-Writers Guild writer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was on a broadcast yes. network. That does not happen. No. And then I'm sitting there watching this show in theaters last night. I'm thinking, this, this does not happen. This is, this is a black swan event in television. Yes. And finally, the mainstream media has been forced to pay attention yeah. that even setting aside that it's a Jesus show for a moment, mm -hmm. this doesn't happen to any show. And on top of it, this is a proper television show. I've seen Disney shows that are movies cut into chunks. They're not a proper TV show. This is a proper TV show. And I don't know where Dallas learned to do that. Bless his heart. He's kicking it. So what is that vision? Because you're in completely uncharted TV waters here. I think what I love about Dallas is that he he's fearless. Like he, he truly is. And he's emotionless with, with how he pursues what he knows God has asked him to do. And he truly means it when he says, and it's contagious to all of us where we, we are in full agreement with him, but he means it when he says, I don't, I'm not here for the numbers. I don't care about the outcome. I literally only care about bringing my loaves and my fish, doing what I know God has asked me mm -hmm. to do. And then he has full permission to do whatever he wants with it after that. Now, does that mean we stop being savvy or we stop being um, genuinely authentic and pure? No, we still have to be both. We still have to operate in wisdom, but that's the thing we cry out for the most. God, give us wisdom because you're doing something that none of us have, the world has never seen before. And we're it's just riding- so the wave and we're trying our best to just simply not get in the way and i think with growth you have to constantly be re-challenged with are we getting in the way are we trying to mold this in humanism instead of letting you just be you god and you have a seat anywhere you want to have a seat and he obviously wants to have a seat on cw broadcast and our, we have amazing partners in lionsgate and cw and it's a it's a beautiful thing to to witness, Kate. Well, I've been wandering around cocktail parties for lo these many years, boring people with my sermon, which is you are leaving money on the table. You have a vast audience. You not only are yes. not serving, you refuse to serve them. Now, it may not agree with your personal principles and it may give you the itchies, but jeepers, would you like to stay in business? Mm. Would you like to? And I think the first one that broke that ice was Hallmark Channel in a more of a secular way. Yes. You know, faith adjacent way. And then everybody had to go, oh, oh, mm -hmm. look at the money they're making over there. Mm -hmm. It's like, why will you not touch this? And credit to the CW's new management. Yes. That the guys, I think the, the guy running it said, this is not like an entire strategy for our network, but it's a Sunday night strategy. Yes. Yes. And they, they have gone on record saying, Hey, they're, 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 this is innovation. There's, this is a whole market that we can engage that um, many haven't, as you've mentioned, Kate, historically engaged and that great credit to CW there for having that vision. And also Amazon and Peacock, Netflix for just really Lionsgate. Uh, yeah. They're, they're, they're all in. Yeah. They really you know, are. And now with the wonder project, they partnering with Amazon for a series are we really seeing a sea change in the attitude towards servicing the faith and values audience? I absolutely do. I think not only that, but in the gathering community mechanism that has made the chosen what it is, mm -hmm. we would be nothing without our community, without the gathering aspect of the content we make. And I think Hollywood's also taking notice of that. Of not only is there truly a place to make extraordinary faith content and deliver to an audience that's underserved, as you mentioned, but there's also room for, wait, how do we activate from a community perspective, a gathering perspective? That's never been done either. And I'm passionate about no, that. No, fa fan organizations are organic. They create themselves and yes. then people take notice and they might take it over, but they always begin. They don't come from the top down. No. This has come from the top down. Yes. It's the literal core of who we are. One of our internal values is we gather. Like we actually, we, like we gather. We are a brand that gathers. Um, that is a core principle of who we are. I love it. 